Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. It's that boy G playing. Don't give a damn. He cooler than the fan. Walking real tall. Some say he's man. Straight up, like. So tell man. me this, bro. You this happened. You mm -hmm. writing. Mm -hmm. Did you? What's the, what was the name of the song that you were writing? No, no listen. I was just write. I used to just write in a diary oh, back then. Just I'm just writing. writing about. I don't. You know what happened that day. I'd be writing about the chick I saw at school that I like. You know what I'm saying? I just, diary. Yeah. yeah no, I don't, hey, listen. I just had to get lost in the flood. I ain't like. I wish I could. That bitch was blue. I had to, I maybe bought it at a book fair or something. I used to be writing it every day. I ain't lying. So, but just to know. Oh, you lost in the Katrina? Yeah, yeah. We lost a lot of Katrina. Like a lot, a lot. I, yeah, a bunch, a bunch. My house. So, when Katrina, I lived in the area. So, when Katrina happened, I actually was in college at LSU. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, actually, my, my wife, when she come home, my old lady back then, but we had about 20 people I knew come to her apartment just to stay back then because. When I looked at the news, i never forget this. This is how I knew my house was gone. Because I stayed, like, we moved out of St. Bernard. We live in a place called, um, like, in Gentilly, which is right by, if you ever been to the Jazz Fest, it's right by the fairground. And so there was a Tag Armley Stadium. They showing the helicopter view, you know, of the flood at that time. And Tag Armley Stadium right next to my house, right? And the, the water was at the scoreboard at Tag Armley Stadium. Now I'm in Baton Rouge at the time, but just seeing that. Oh, you got out though. Yeah, yeah. I was at, I was I was in Baton Rouge at the time. So I know I wasn't in I was in college in Baton Rouge at the time when Katrina happened. But when I'm looking at the news and I see the water level at the football stadium, I pretty much knew my house was done. It was over with yeah, yeah, literally. So like I never so fact I mean just facts, I never saw my house. After that, I ain't won't go. My mom went back and you know saw all that shit, cleaned it out. But I just like my mom said like like the fucking fridge was, you know, in the living room and the, the stove, you know, like the water had just been and, and just I mean that shit just sad. Think about how much shit we lost pictures and you know you know all kind of you know memorabilia and stuff like that. That yeah, we lost a lot during that shit. It was crazy. Man, that was a tough time. I yeah. remember that oh five. You know what I'm saying? No, when it, when it, oh, five, yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, no, it was crazy. I remember that because we, we from that, us from negatives, we mm -hmm. didn't go to school for like a day because mm -hmm. they sent all our buses down there. Right, come so on. So I met a lot of people from New Orleans in 05. No, it was when crazy. When they came to our school, bro, all I seen was like wallet chains, niggas, niggas rapping Dipset yeah. and Wayne. Yeah, no, listen, listen. <laughs> that's all and, I heard. And that's when I, and I had just started teaching at that point, yeah. right? And I'm telling you, I'll never forget, I'm telling these little dudes in Baton Rouge and people, I mean, this might be controversial, but it is what it is. Like, Baton Rouge didn't have his rep that it have now tell Katrina. Mm. I'm not, I'm going to post No, 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 that's fine. No, but no, no, but I'm saying that <laughs> as far as, musically mean, no, mean, meaning murders and all this. Yeah. Like, because what happened is a lot of dudes from New Orleans moved to Baton Rouge and the crime, like, Literally, I like, and so I, like, I'll never forget. I'm telling the dude because they, you know, my kids, when I first started teaching, would be interested, asking me questions, what it's like in New Orleans, whatever. And I'll never forget. I'm telling this little dude. I said, bro, where I grew up, the stuff y'all play about, dudes get killed for. That's what I told this little dude. I'm teaching. He probably 12, 13. After Katrina happened, no joke. About two weeks later, this little dude brother get killed by a dude from New Orleans. True story. You know what I'm saying? So my point is that that. You know, I love Baton Rouge. I spent 13 years in Baton Rouge, so I claim Baton Rouge. But my point is, like, New Orleans, crime and murder rate, been, been. Baton Rouge, like, for example, if you check the numbers back then, it was high for Baton Rouge to have, like, 80 murders in a year. Yeah. It ain't like that now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They pushing 200, 300 now. You know what I'm saying? So my point is, like, before Katrina, it was a, I could just say this, felt like Baton Rouge was a much calmer, safer place. And they, I mean, it been, you know, I ain't hating, it been Jigga City Park. I love, you know, I love Baton Rouge, bro. Every, every time I think of Baton Rouge, I smile. I had such a good time at, at bro, I love LSU, bro. You know, so yeah, every time I, I think I, of LSU, I smile. And I, I want to go back, because that's, that's how you got to Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. In New Orleans, uh -huh. my great to Baton Rouge to go to college. Yep. What did you go to college for? So when I went to school, I actually was in there for mass communications, advertising. Now, I, let me let me backtrack. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> so when I first went to went to LSU, I thought I wanted to be a veterinarian. 
right? Because I like animals, oh, wow. right? <laughs> As you can see, mm -hmm. all these damn animals running around. Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know is that you had to be good at science. Like, and I ain't know no damn science. Like, I took one science class, and I realized, man, that you, you got to, you know what I'm saying? If you think you're going to be a doctor, you just can't say that shit. You got to really, in high school, have been serious about that. You know what I'm saying? So I went there thinking that, oh, I could just say I won't be a doctor, and that shit going to happen. And so, no, man, after I took my first science class, they were talking about isotopes, and mm. I don't know what an atom is. So I'm like, yeah, we, this ain't going to work. Mm -hmm. So I, I instantly changed my... My, my major. So I started out thinking I was going to be a vet. Um, and then after that, I got into mass communication, like TV broadcasting and all that. So I got into advertising commercial. And then I actually, that's what I got my degree in, right? But the way I got into teaching is my partner at the time, my roommate at the time, he was actually majoring in education. And he would come home all the time talking about how fun it is, you know, dealing with the little dudes. You know, he from New Orleans, from the and the kids like you better when they can relate to you. You know what I'm saying? So it make it easier dealing with little kids when they know you can relate to the stuff they're talking about, right? So he would come home all the time talking about how fun it was. was. So that kind of got me interested in teaching, you know what I'm saying? So then knowing the damn job security of teaching, you know what I'm saying? So that really... Got me like, yeah, man, that shit crazy. You really, that, you get real life job security, insurance, blah, 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 all these benefits from T. I'm like, yeah, man, that might be a good decision as far as walking around looking for a marketing job and all this. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, so then I took my classes that I needed to take to get certified to teach. Oh, so, you certified? Yeah, so I'm a certified. Yeah, 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 I'm certified. I've been, been, yeah. been, been certified. But yeah, so all my, I went, I went to school thinking I was going to do marketing, so I got a degree in that, so I could do that. You know, I, even with, you know, if you look at the quality of my album covers and shit, all that is marketing. So, I, you know, and that's all me, you know, so I know how to, you know, put together, promote, whatever. I'm just, like I say, I'm the worst self-promoter in the world just by being... How can I say? You what? say you're introverted? Int introvert, yeah. Like I, I, but I'm how, almost... how are you introverted and, te and you're a teacher? No, here's the thing. <laughs> it, it's so crazy. Because... How can I say this shit? You, I guess you have to be a teacher to know it, bro. Like, nothing feel better than seeing a kid turn up. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, like when you're working with a kid who didn't believe in themselves, who had no confidence, and you could see them when they realize, like, man, that's, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, like, and when you got that ability to, to make kids turn up, like, man, that shit priceless. You know now, what I'm saying? Now, so, which, now, which subjects are you teaching? I teach English and reading. Ooh. So, yeah, so, man, we reading stories, breaking down stories, breaking down character, plot, theme, you know, all that different stuff. So, it, you know, but, and I'm going to go there, but it, it just is what it is. Like, what I told you when we talked a little bit over the phone, for it, like, like, if you met my daughter, right, and, and this is probably why I'm so hard on my children. Because over all these years of teaching, you see the results of when people don't take education serious. So one thing I got from teaching was, nigga, you better stay involved with your children. Because the consequences mm -hmm. is crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So for example, my little daughter, no joke, in the third grade with an 11th grade reading level. And that ain't by mistake. That's because we read with our ass every day. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so I can tell you, this is a true story. So she came home this about, about three months ago. She came home. She, like, she joked out. She like, Dad, you embarrassed me today. I'm like, what you talking about? She was like, we were at school, and we played a game called Category. And it was my time. And she said, and the category was YouTube channels. And she said, I don't know any YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how happy that made me? Yeah. For her to not know no YouTube channel, yeah. but she reading on the 11th grade level. Yeah. You understand me? So it ain't yeah. by mistake. It your kids do what you allow them to do. So what they look at, Roblox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All that, I man. I don't even know the... Yeah, exactly. No, so here's my thing. My point is this, and I really mm -hmm. mean it with my little daughter. She got an iPad. My son got Nintendo Switches, all that. But there's a time to turn that shit off. Turn it off. Turn, you know what I'm saying? They can only do that on the weekend. They can only do that when they got a school break. You know what I'm saying? Like, like distractions ain't new. Like, nigga, if my mom would have let me play PlayStation all day and never made me do my work, nigga, I would... You know what I'm saying? At some point, you, and, and what's so crazy is with the technology, you could take the shit everywhere. So at, when we was younger, you had to turn that shit.
off and it would, you could turn it off and get away from it.